have reached 1999, and right now we are reaching people all over the world. The Supreme Grandmaster, Anamubi Rafata, is truly setting the record straight. Now listen to these facts. The voice of truth in these days and times. The United Wapping Nation of Moore brings you the man of the hour. White people are going crazy. In other way for this, I can make it white like it does now. On race, like you all of us like to say, we are losing. And when we walk into that institution, we are walking in at our own risk. You follow me there? When the policemen show up, over, you are in danger of whatever demon is plaguing him out of his insecurity for that moment. When a doctor walks in to examine you, you are at the mercy of his emotions, stability, or insanity. Because this is one of the main things they say. You know, it's strange about serial killers. Recognize. You follow? Yet, when they make a movie, they character cast. So they can cast a character to suit you and I. They can find, and you say, well, what? Denzel Washington played that part perfectly. Someone picked him and said, he'll fit that part perfectly. They can character cast so well that the actor in the movie can actually begin to convince you that they're really that character. So with that, they're admitting that they know how people think. They know what people see. They know what people want to see. Yeah. In other words, they know the law of cause and effect. So how come they can't profile a serial killer? How come he has what they refer to as a normal appearance? Simply because he is not the mentally deranged individual who's a biker, who's been raised for a bear you know, in skin. And I'm saying riding his motorcycle and, and smoking drugs and doing he's not that. He's a doctor, he's a lawyer, he's a policeman, he's a fireman, he's a white collar and a blue collar person. And they always admit after they catch him that boy, when you look at no, no, what they say. But look at him, you never think Ted Bundy would do that. Who figured that out? After now check the point. After he did it, you got me? After he's already killed all those people. Somebody with white looks at this white guy and said, gosh, to look at him, you would never think he would do that. Isn't that after the fact? You should be saying, God, now we know what people look like who do things like that. The doctors and the lawyers and the teachers and the firemen and the policemen and the politicians are the ones that are doing all the dangerous things. The KKK is not a, a bunch of poor back country white folks walking out of the woods anymore. That didn't work. That stopped working in the 60s when niggas stopped punching them in their face. So they had to come out from under those hoods. The ones you see in the hoods now are a big bunch of, they call fat pop belly hillbillies who want to hold on to the KKK image the same way if you want to go back to your old neighborhood, some niggas are still hanging on the corner. Some niggas are still joining gangs and gangs went out in the 50s. There's always that. Some guys still grew up in the hallway and drinking wine. There's always that group of people, and that's what you're looking at. What does that mean? It means the devil's time is up. And the only people who keep the devil alive is you. If you keep on pumping into his, into his world, feeding into him, you gotta whip the door, like it says, be in the world, but it says the Bible, come out of her, my people, so you be not partaken of her iniquity or evil. But you still are in his world. Still seeking jobs in his world, still doing things in his world, as you see his world from A man shot a kid five years old and shot at five other kids, and he's walking on national television with a smile on his face. All right? He shot some Jewish kids. The point is, why show him? Why show him? Why show his smile? Why put the thought in the mind of some other school? Why promote the thought? They could just as well mention the incident and never show it, and never gave him an opportunity to smile at America like, yeah, I killed some Jewish kid, or I shot some Jewish kid, and I killed this Latino brother. You follow? Why would they give him a platform? You follow? They give him a platform because they have this new philosophy and it's called copycat. You know what that means? 
Usually when somebody sees some kind of crime, they go and emulate the crime. So the reason why they were putting on television is because the next day someone killed a Jewish rabbi. Because he said it's time to kill Jews. And then some people sit down with absolutely nothing going on between their ears. They wait and see what happens, and that's how they act. And that person got up and went and got a gun and killed somebody else. They were hoping, they are praying for what they have been propagating for the last 20 years. You know what that is? A rage war. Those Caucasians who have been putting away and stockpiling weapons, training out in the woods way back in the 60s, they were doing this. Living in the woods. Came back from Vietnam with nothing to kill. So they started forming all kinds of groups like the militia, the Freemans, and etc. And they've been waiting. They preach there's going to be a race riot. That is the foundation of their doctrine. You understand? You know the sad thing about it? They said, Go back and check their parents and hear They said before the year 2000. They preached amongst the skinheads, the Aryan nation. They preached that there'll be a race riot before the year 2000. And what month are we in? How many more months they got before their race riot? Huh? Before January comes in. They got to get a race riot going between now and what? Four months, otherwise their whole philosophy is cracked. You know what I'm saying? It goes out the window as crap for the babbling of some angry, racist, insecure people who have spent money stockpiling weapons, money training in what they call paramilitary training in the woods, and setting up shooting uh, lodges and just acting but it's coming out, there's a lot. Because there's no way to it. Because we're just not that interested. You follow? We've learned to adapt as a people. We've learned how to survive. And we're just not that mean. We're not as angry and vicious as white people. They cannot provoke us. They want a race to fight. They've been preparing for it. And that's why they're doing the stuff they're doing. And they're going to do some more stuff. But they're hoping you and I get mad. People like Jesse Jackson have to be careful. Has to be very careful. Because they think if we get him, his people are going to get mad and they'll be around. Or if we get him, they was hoping on the 29th that we'll be right. If they're not desperate, and they say, well, this guy seems to have people that love him. Melakai is that character. If we can threaten his life, his followers will get mad. They don't know. They don't know how we think. They don't know we see tomorrow before it comes. You're looking at God-fearing people who put their trust in the Most High first and know they're dealing with devil. Devil is in human form. Hey, I'm not the one that called them devils in human form. Jesus did. Jesus in St. John said, you are of your father, the devil. He's been a liar since the beginning. Here's something Grandma always said. God don't like us. God don't like us. And boy, they were some ugly people. They got some ugly souls. Ugly, they don't have any souls. Let me go back. They got ugly spirits. They do ugly things. So we got the table turned. Feel good. We stopped, we regrouped, we put our spirits together, we started praying, meditating, and we stopped fighting like demons. We stopped fighting back, cursing, fighting back, ah, ah, hello, ah. and we started fighting with the mind, fighting with the soul, fighting with the spirit. We started fighting with God on our shoulders. And it changed around because we're dealing with people with the devil. And they can't deal with the power of God. They said we work with black magic. Well, we wouldn't work with green magic as black as we are, would we? And so it's ours. And they're more afraid of us than we are of them. All we got to do is stay on the right path. Stay legal. Stop breaking the law. You know what I'm saying? Keep your prayers up. 
Keep a positive vibe in your family. Get away from negative people. Keep that energy flowing, and there's nothing you can't do. I'm telling you now, we need it more than ever. Because the man who we trusted is losing power. We all had our trust in the white man and his system, and his system is failing him. What is he going to do on December 31st? What is he going to do? The question. I ain't care. No worry about what you're going to do. What is the man who has the button going to do? Have you thought about that? Some of y'all said, ain't nothing going to happen on with the YK. Hello? It already started happening. We prophesied. We knew it was coming to 1970. We watched the calendar. We watched the stars. We loved the events. We saw the wars. We had the diseases. And we knew each time we came how not to catch it. That's why there's so many of us sitting up here without it. Because we knew what to do. We knew when to fold. <laughs> A whole lot of folks didn't know when to fold. They did it up. You understand? Why? Because somebody up there wanted me and you to be prepared. Are you prepared? Are you still in your system? Because his system is going to fall. No doubt about it. What are the police going to do? They don't have to worry about the hurting me. You know what they got to worry about? Them hillbillies. Them militia groups hate them more than, they, they, than us. We get arrested in peace. And I've showed you this on national television. You watch it. When they try to arrest a white boy, he's kicking and fighting and spitting and carrying on and wrapping up right? They know their problem is not us. They got to keep the attention on black folks. Yes, let's go. Yes. First, I'd like to say it's a great privilege to speak to you and see you in person. Um, I have a loved one who was exposed to PCP uh, about eight years ago. And um, I was told by a physician then that he will have the occurrence uh, until like two years straight. Well, it happens that like every he has a little uh, symptoms, and he sometimes scares the family. Right. I'm never afraid of him, but he had such great sexual attacks. I remember the letter. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to speak to you and see if you can ask to what the child would say, what are you afraid of you? It has a lot to do with whatever was given to him, but most of that is laboratory made. How much was given? Has he done it more than once? Was he done more than once? Is it and this is because what these type of um, tailor-made drugs do is they tailor-make themselves to your blood system. And they stay in your body. And they just clear up whatever they wish. And there's nothing you can do to prevent that once it's in your bloodstream. I mean, transfusion, nothing. But it, and it aligns itself with your, your body. So he's going to have this episode. What you have to do is y'all have to set up a pattern of things that, that stimulate and bring it on. For instance, let's say a, a bright red light may bring it on. Your follow or an argument may bring it on. Uh, a depression between a girlfriend. Uh, too much alcohol. Even watching the wrong kind of uh, movie or cinema that can affect you emotionally can bring it on. The family who are concerned have to set up a pattern so they can predict what brings it on and how long it stays. So they can set up a system of prevent, preventing him from hurting himself or somebody else. So you can know that what happens around at least about every six weeks or so. And then you can say, now we're sitting first time, so you're going to start regressing about now. So you set up something that's totally opposite of what he's doing for him. You follow? You follow to restrain, restrict his consciousness from what his girlfriend or whatever kind of thing. So the only thing, anything that can provoke him, you got you got you already have a family system that actually imprisons him. But he got to be willing to accept that imprisonment. And that's gonna stop and when I'm saying please don't look understand. It's 
it's, a, it's like a werewolf. As you can keep the werewolf a cage when the moon is full, you don't have blood. And that's what it is. It's in the blood you need. It's not much you can do. It can make the beautiful part is it can just go away like that. You can urinate out and it's gone. And that's what you can But until that time, you have to go up and set up a system like a calendar around the black moon. This is when you're going to start that time. And then you open my system. And he has to be in compliance with that. Okay? Yes. Uh, I've read an article on uh, the paper some months ago, and they were speaking about stuff they were trying to do in the near future, uh, and uh, robots and like human beings. And also they spoke about um, a spiritual computer right. on, uh, on, on what's like what would it do? You know, would it, like get information on this out here, or can it do something to you? Or? No. When they say spiritual computer. What they're doing right now is real frightening because they have learned that what they call matter is not the final stage. And what they call atomic energy is not the final stage. And what they call, now here's the deep part, that once they found out that an atom, an hydrogen atom, what they have claimed is the lightest sum of energy for the last hundred years. Once they found out that the atom wasn't the lightest and that they were quartz, and then after that, Z it. Once they found this out, and what they have not done is always in school, when he taught us about cells, they would always compare a cell to an atom. They would say, well, the atom has a nucleus and it has electrons and protons moving around it. Just like the cell in the human body. It has a nucleus and it has salt. If they became aware of the fact that hydrogen, which they thought was the lightest atom, is not that there is invisible matter, matter that does not have a sum. By that I mean the word we use, something, really comes out S-U-M-T-H-I-N-G. The sum of the thing, how something, what it amounts to. So they say hydrogen is the lightest atom or the lightest thing in existence. Once they found quartz, they have to alter all the scales and all the weights, be it metrics or whatever, because there's no weight for quartz. There's no substance for the quartz. There's no density for the quartz. So it is actually a spiritual thing that they have confirmed exists when we hear they couldn't prove that the spiritual world exists. The acceptance of an element lighter than an atom is admitting that there is some existence intelligence that is not receivable by any equipment that they have made to date. So with that being related to energy, now let's go to the human cell. So when they found that out, then they must have also found out that beneath the light of the, the smallest form of matter, there must also be intelligent energy. So they confirmed the Ba and the Ka and the Ah of ancient Egypt, that there is a spiritual world. There is an etheric world, an intelligent abode that they are now tapping into with computers because they couldn't tap into it with the ordinary mathematician's mind. So they used math to do this. So what they're calling these new spiritual computers are computers that will be given to detect or sense intelligence non, not perceivable by the human eye. They will be looking into exmo plasma and the spiritual world. Now what they don't know is the gates of the spiritual world. And when they open them, when they make this magnetic link, the way you do with electricity, when you make a mistake and grab electricity, it has a name. You grab it, it grabs you. And then it decides to travel from its destination and includes you in its path and it zooms through your whole body. When they bite into this spiritual world with these computers, what they don't want to admit is that when it grabs, when they grab it, it's gonna grab them. Now, do they know that happens? Yes. It's called the Ouija board. 
And they have admitted over the years, if you play with a Ouija board, you can open up a porthole or a gate to another side where you will be plagued with demons for the rest of your life. No, Jesus is not coming through the Ouija board for you. However, there will be people on the other side, disembodied souls, that will speak to you and pretend they're Jesus. And then tell you, hey, you got to go out and save the world. You got to go out and kill all those people. Because they take pride in having an effect on the physical world. These are people who died prematurely, died in hate crime, died by, by uh, brutal murders, and they're now physically trapped in this realm with you. They're called disembodied souls. Oh, you feel them. You feel them on the back of your neck sometimes. You feel them breathing. You feel them sometimes when you're walking through. They step periodically into this realm by accident, but you know what enhances their presence? The adrenaline in your body. The fear. The adult also picks it up. Just like that dog can tell when you're afraid to go after you. Also, a dog can hear sounds you don't hear and see things on the level they see spirits you don't see. So can cats. And that's why they use dogs and cats in witchcraft. Because they have a link to both worlds. Now they have to come to the reality that these things are no longer, uh, what do you call it? Um, Star with that movie? <laughs> no longer the Twilight Zone. They're no longer the Twilight Zone. It's real. And now they're able to weigh the soul. They're able to detect through curly and photography the reality that if they clip off your finger, that something's still there and they can pick it up with a camera. They can actually film it. Did you know that? It's called Curlian Photography. Look it up. They can remove your arm and put it under a light and you'll see your fingers and everything come right back in. No, there's no arm there. This is a fact today. So they have to accept that there was something about that Bible, something about that Koran, and something about that Torah, which all came from the Egyptian writers. You understand? Something about that religion that they got from those Egyptians and their connection with the stars and their talk about the soul and the spirit and the ethnic you, the Ba, the Ka, and the Ah, or the Ruach, or the Ruh in the Torah, or the Holy Ghost. There's something about the fact that Horus was known to be a falcon and Jesus was known to be a dove. There's something about the connection between the birds and these two so-called divine children. And Horus being the son of Osiris, a god, making him the son of God and Ra, as Ra Harakati, Ra the God, so he's the son of God and God on earth. In Egypt, something like 10,000 years cutting it short before Jesus. Something about the fact that that's written on a wall, carved in a stone, kept in a tablet, locked in a vault, and kept in the bony cage of those few fortunate beings that have access to that information. There's something about that, you hear me? Something about the link between that information and why they want us to be everything but Egyptian. They don't mind us being Christian. They don't mind us being Muslim. They don't mind us being Buddhist. We can cut our hair and get those patches with the orange. Don't want to be a Hare Krishna. Stand here, point yourself at me. Don't link up and take Egypt seriously. They fought against Dr. Ben Yachin for over 50 years as he tried to reveal how powerful Egypt was. You hear me? And the power the Egyptians had. Once they start realizing their existence, that's the first thing, the first realization is, I'm not just studying Egyptology, I am an Egyptian. 
I know y'all are saying walk like the wind and talk like the distance. They did that too. They put that in their mind so it turns into a joke and a way from reality. In other words, their present day scientists have now come to face the reality that there is a spiritual world and that you are directly linked to it. Out of all the countries in the Caribbean, all right? Which country is suppressed and kept the poorest? Hey, listen again. Out of all the countries in the Caribbean, you're right. Which country? Why? Bude, voodoo. White folks by the hundreds of thousands go to Louisiana for the Mardi Gras, strip off their clothes, get buck naked, stunk drunk at a voodoo ceremony. Why? Because they're seeking soul. They're seeking contact with something. They know that something missing because they hear that beat. I could ask any one of y'all to get up and lock yourself in physically with those sounds. Not just, I don't want to just use the word dance because that's one of the tricks. I don't just want to say dance. I want to say you can lock yourself in with that sound, and if you keep going, you go into a form of ecstasy. So they create a drug called ecstasy to detour your mind from that reality. They create clubs, bumping beats, and have children spend from 10 to 4 in the morning in a form of ecstasy. Now, dancing to the music. Going to concerts would stir up a certain amount of energy that makes the kid bone rush the stage, step and crush people while in the state of. So they see that when we gather in groups and we start linking our emotions, things start happening. So they made laws, unlawful assembly. What does it mean? Three or more of y'all standing in one place is dangerous. What the heck does that mean? Three or more ethnics in one place on a corner is dangerous. How do they automatically become dangerous? Because there's going to be some type of mental link that can take us to a state of ecstasy. And while we're there, we might happen to see a white person walk by and remember what they've done to us and just out of the clear blue sky decide. I want to burn my foot in your butt. I don't know you. I don't know you, but I know what you have done to my people in America, in the Caribbean, in Cuba, Puerto Rico, even where? Africa, well, I know what you've done to my people where? China? I know what you do to people. I know what you are. You are the devil. Now, I didn't say you're the devil just because I want to say it. I'm saying it because the Bible says it. Right in the beginning of Genesis, it tells you that there's going to be a hate, an enmity between who? The woman's seed and the serpent seed. Genesis chapter 3, when they introduce you to the devil, why? I don't know, but that's when he gave birth to you. If you never told us, told us about it, we would have stayed in God. You gave people the doctrine of the devil so they would form a satanic church. You hear me? But you told us that there's going to be hate, enmity, jealous between the woman who was who? Eve, Howard, whatever name you want to use, and who else? And Satan. And Satan what? They said Satan Zira in Hebrew. Satan Zira. Is offspring. So the Bible admits to us in Genesis chapter 3 that the devil has a zira in Hebrew. I don't know what you mean in the New Testament in English. That's a lot. In the original language, zira. He has a seed. A seed is coming from reproducing a begetting, a willard, a ula in Hebrew, willard in Arabic, to 
conceive a child. So the Bible admits in Genesis 3 that Satan is going to have children. And his children are going to be against Eve's children. And the description of Adam in the Bible is Adama. Adama, from Edama, from brown, red soil, from the clotted blood. If you cut a person and you take, take the blood out and let it sit, when the air hits it, it turns back to brown dirt, granules, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So the original man, Adam, was black. You understand? And Eve was black. So if Eve was black according to the Bible, you me? And God said, I don't want hate between your seed, devil, and Eve's seed. And Eve was black. Then there's a physical devil walking around on earth with us. Having children when we have children. You hear me? The difference is, as much as we aspire for peace, we'll march for peace. We'll turn the other cheek. They aspire for hate. Racism. Killing. War. They manufacture drugs. 